Okay, well time for another video. So this evening I want to take a look at uh, what this phrase means, differentiate with respect to. Uh, very often in physics and um, chemistry and almost any kind of science, uh, very often you'll see equations like formulas and so forth and you'll be told to differentiate those equations with respect to a certain variable. So I want to talk about what that phrase means. What does it mean if we're told to differentiate with respect to X or differentiate with respect to W uh, or differentiate with respect to T and so on? So let's start with this example. You might recognize this formula right here. This is the uh, formula for the area of a trapezoid. And suppose we would like to take this formula and differentiate with respect to H. So what does that mean, differentiate with respect to H? Well, to do this, we treat every variable that isn't H as though it is a function of H. So what I did right underneath here is I rewrote the equation with all the variables written as functions of h. So rather than having a here, I wrote a of h. I used function notation. Uh, this variable is already in h, so it just stays in h. And we have two other variables here, b and a, and I rewrote both of those variables also as functions of h. So rather than b, I have b of h, and rather than a, I have a of h. Now, at this point, we just take the derivative the way we normally would. So, after we take the derivative, we get this. Now, why does it look that way? Well, first of all, when you take the derivative here, notice you're going to have to use the product rule. Because we have 1 half h times b of h plus a of h. So, 1 half h is the first function b of h plus a of h is the second function. So the derivative is going to be, well, the derivative of a of h is a prime of h. And using the product rule on this side, uh, the derivative of 1 half h is just 1 half. And we multiply by the second function. Plus the first function, which is 1 half h, multiplied by the derivative of the second function which would be a prime of h plus b prime of h. I meant to put the b prime first, but it doesn't matter. It's the same thing, right? <laughs> and um, at this point, after you take the derivative, we just uh, we can eliminate the function notation now. Uh, we can put the b of h and a of h. We can put those back to just b and a. And we change all of our derivatives into the Leibniz notation. So when we do that, we get an equation now that looks like this. So a prime of h, I just rewrite that in the Leibniz notation, dA over dH. Uh, the function notation basically goes away. We just go back to b and a. And of course, a prime of h would be dA dH, and b prime of h would be dB over dH. So if you want to differentiate with respect to a variable, you just treat every variable in the formula as though it is a function of that variable. Let's do another example. Let's take this equation and we're going to differentiate with respect to t. Now this is an interesting one because notice that the variable t, it doesn't even appear in the formula anywhere. But that's okay. The process still works the same as it did in the last one. We treat every variable in this formula as though it is a function of t. And uh, what formula is this? This is actually the formula for the volume of a cone. And we're going to be doing something like this in the next chapter here, so it's important that we know how to do this. So if I treat every variable as though it's a function of t, I will get an equation that looks like this. So all I did was just rewrite all of the variables as functions of t. So rather than v, I write v of t. Uh, rather than just r, I write r of t. And rather than just h, I write h of t. 
So now that we have every variable written as though it's a function of t, we now take the derivative the way we normally would. And once again, notice over here on the right side, I'm going to be using the product rule. Um, I have one third pi r of t squared. That's my first function. h of t is the second function. So I need the um, product rule over here. Now let's take the derivative. And we take the derivative, it looks like this. So we have um, the derivative of v of t is v prime of t. And then using the product rule over here on the left side, or excuse me, the right side, we have the constant one third pi, which stays put. And the derivative of r of t squared would be 2 times r of t to the first power times the derivative of the inside function r prime of t. And what's that? That's the chain rule, right? Multiplied by the second function h of t. Plus the first function, 1 third pi r of t squared, multiplied by the derivative of the second function, which would be h prime of t. Now, after we differentiate, we can just put everything back into the original variable. So we can put this, we can put r of t back to just r, and we, we can put h of t back to just h, and we change all of our derivatives to Leibniz notation. So doing that, we get an equation now that looks like this, looks a lot cleaner. So the v prime of t just goes to dv dt. And um, I kind of changed some of the factors around here, you know, make the one third and the two with two thirds. And um, the r, r of t just goes back to r, h of t just goes back to h, r prime of t is dr dt. And in the second term, we'll just have one third pi r squared dh dt. Okay? So that's what the equation would look like if we differentiate with respect to t. Now, unlike implicit differentiation, you don't have to solve this equation for anything. So don't worry about solving for dv dt or dr dt or dh dt. Um, we are going to do something like that when we talk about related rates in the next uh, chapter. But uh, we don't really need to, to, to discuss it tonight, but we will later. Now, you might wonder, just like there was with implicit differentiation, is there a simpler way for us to do this process? Uh, and the answer is yes. You could actually go straight from the formula that we start with to the formula you get after you differentiate. And all we really have to do is the following. Let's go back to the first one up here. So we were told to differentiate this formula here with respect to h. So really all we need to do here is um, just remember that if you take the derivative of anything involving a, you're going to have to multiply by dA over dH. If you take the derivative of something involving b, you'll have to multiply by dB over dH. And if you take the derivative of something involving a, little a, you have to multiply by dA over dH. Uh, likewise, on the example we did here, where we wanted to differentiate with respect to t, uh, we just need to remember, we just take the derivative the way we normally would. Uh, just anytime you take the derivative of something involving v, you have to multiply by dv dt. Something involving r, you would have to multiply by dr dt. Something involving h, you would have to multiply by dh dt. Okay. So if we did that, let's see what it would look like. So the derivative of v would be 1 times dv dt. And over here using the product rule, the derivative of 1 third pi r squared would be 2 thirds pi r, just r, yeah, <laughs> uh, dr dt plus 1 third pi r squared times dh dt. So let's look at the two more examples and let's try to do them without having to go through changing all the functions into or changing all the variables into function notation. So let's take this formula and let's differentiate with respect to t. Notice there's no t in the equation but that's okay we just treat every variable as though it's a function of t. 
So let's use a shortcut on this. Uh, we just take the derivative the way we normally would, just like with implicit differentiation, except when we take the derivative of something involving x, I'm going to have to multiply by dx dt. When I take the derivative of something involving y, I'm going to have to multiply by dy dt. So here we go. Um, here's what the derivative would look like. So we have to use the product rule on the first term. So the derivative of the first factor is going to be 2x dx dt multiplied by the second factor y cubed plus the first factor x squared multiplied by the derivative of the second factor which would be 3y squared dy dt and the derivative of this term would be negative 2y dy dt and the derivative of the fourth term, or excuse me, the third term would be 3x squared dx dt and of course the derivative of a constant is zero. Okay. And I have one more here. Let's differentiate with respect to m and the equation I have here is cosine of m squared plus n cubed. Cosine of m squared plus n cubed. Now we're differentiating with respect to m. So if we take the derivative of anything involving m, it doesn't need to be multiplied by anything. We won't need any Leibniz notation with that. But if we differentiate something that involves n, we're going to have to multiply by dn over dm. So here we go. If we, take, if we differentiate with respect to m, we get an equation that looks like this. Uh, note we have to use the chain rule to start because we have these two terms inside the cosine function. So the derivative of cosine, of course, is negative sine composed with the inside function. And then we multiply by the derivative of the inside function with respect to m, though. So the derivative of m squared with respect to m is just 2m. The derivative of n cubed with respect to m is 3n squared dn dm. So we'll do a few more of these examples in class tomorrow when we're doing our review day for our test. And um, until then, that'll be all. So we'll see you tomorrow.